Proof of what? How blockchains are secure. To understand how a blockchain is secure, the first thing we need to understand is how a blockchain works. The first element to learn is the peer-to-peer -peer network. This is an image representing a peer-to-peer -peer network. Nodes are computers that are connected to this network and only talk with the computer around them. For an example, if we take uh, two nodes in the peer-to-peer -peer network and we look what they see of the peer-to-peer -peer network, we can understand they only see a portion of it. They don't see the full extent of the network. So they really don't know how large an extent the network can be. Let's say that somebody wants to post a transaction, let's say sending one Bitcoin to a friend from his mobile wallet. He's gonna post the transaction this transaction is broadcast to one or more nodes, and these nodes only communicate this transaction to the nodes around them, and the nodes around them communicate it to the nodes around them, and so on and so forth. Let's say at this point somebody else wants to post a transaction from the other side of the network. He's going to do the same thing from his mobile wallet. He's going to post the transaction to one node. This node validate the transaction. If the transaction is good, he's going to tell it to the node around them. At the same time, the previous transaction is still expanding around the network, and so is the second transaction. As you can see, finally, one of the nodes on the bottom has received both the transaction. More the propagation of the transaction expand, more nodes are receiving both the transaction. Ideally, at a certain point, the full network should have all the transactions that have been broadcasted. Now, for the example, I use only two, but in reality, there are hundreds, if not thousands of transactions that are being broadcast at the same time through the peer-to-peer -peer network. Truth is that sometimes some node only receive part of the whole transaction. This is because it's not known to them to who they are connected and who is uh, okay to pass them the transaction. Second element to understand is the chain of blocks from blockchain. How it is made? The chain of blocks are blocks that are numbered with a consecutive number indicated the length of the blockchain. There is a special block which is called the Genesis block and is the first block of the blockchain. This block is not broadcast through the peer-to-peer -peer network. This block is already included in the software that people install in the server to make it a node of the blockchain. Then, to this block, the first new block is going to be added. So, how a block is made? Let's go back to the peer-to-peer -peer network and zoom in a particular node. Suppose this node wants to present a block to the rest of the network is going to create a block, put the transaction they has received inside, and then let's zoom out, start yelling to all the nodes around him, here is a new block. The nodes are going to take the block, look at it, and if they consider it a good block, they're gonna wait and then put it chain to the last block that they know. The problem is, like we saw with transaction, what happens if at the same time from two extremes of the network, two nodes propose a block at the same time with different transactions inside? Happen that to the last known block, there is going to be two options of a next block, one proposed by a node, one proposed by the other node. So which is the block that every node in the blockchain are going to choose? And here we go to the consensus part. The consensus is what makes all the nodes take the same decision. Consider that in the peer-to-peer, -peer, the nodes cannot communicate to all the other nodes because they don't know the extent of the peer-to-peer -peer network. There must be some written rules to determine which is between all the, the new blocks that a node receives, the way to choose the best one and use it as a next block. So now we go to some explanation. I apologize for people that are already expert in blockchain that these are basic things, but sometimes it's important to understand them. What is the consensus? The consensus is the mechanic to chain a block to the other. And that's why we call it blockchain. Each block has transaction. 
is chain with a consensus mechanism to the next block, and the best chain is always the chain that wins. In the moment that two blocks are both chained to the last block, some by some nodes and the other block from other nodes, we get to the point of what is called a fork, a fork in the blockchain. So we need to break the chain that is the weakest, that is not strong enough. In fact, the two blocks are connected with a strength, a strength that in different consensus type is measured in different manners, okay? Obviously, there are those that are connected with a lot of strength and those that are connected with a huge quantity of strength. These are going to be the blocks the nodes choose for their chain. So, how is a, a blockchain made? The proof of what? There are many types of proof. There is proof of work that is born together with Bitcoin and is very famous. And use miners, use work to guarantee the chaining of the block. There are different kinds of uh, implementation of proof of work, but uh, uh, those are anyway very similar on the aspect of how they are implemented. Then there is proof of stake, that there is the most famous alternative to proof of work, and many other proof. I saw more than 40 that have been deployed. Different way of proof, each one using a different way to measure the strength on which the blocks are chained one to the other. So, which is the main difference between proofs? The main difference, in my opinion, is uh, how the chaining is uh, calculated. That those that use externally produce results and those that use internally produce results. What I mean? In the case of a proof of work, there is a miner, there is a piece of hardware that generates mathematical result, and the best result, which is harder to find, is going to be the one that is used for chaining blocks one to the other. So the best result determines the best chain, because more work is required to get a best result. Then there are the blockchain that use internal data to calculate the result. So from the situation that they have learned in the history of the chain, they use this information to secure one block on the other. We're going to more in detail about this in a short moment. Let's look at proof of work and let's see how proof of work behave when there is a fork. Let's say that one part of the fork has been proposed by miners with a certain quantity of power. So they use the power to uh, secure the blockchain in a certain way. Another part of the fork has been promoted by some other, they have much more power. Thus, uh, they are creating better mathematical result to chain the block. This automatically implies that in case of a fork, the authoritative chain is the one created with more hashing power, which is the one on the left. Let's move to, to look at proof of stake. Proof of stake and put stake in parentheses because there may be the concept for many other proof that use internal information from the blockchain. One element that is key for this uh, kind of uh, chain is digital signature. A digital signature is done with a private key that generates a public key and allow to sign with the identity of the public key. Set is uh, means that each block contains information of signature done by certain account and uh, guarantee that Previously, this account have signed something and they had a certain state, which is represented by the blockchain itself. In a longer chain, each block has a selected set of accounts that can sign the block in order to guarantee the chain with the next block. Based on certain specific that depend on the kind of proof, if it's proof of time, proof of space, proof of stake, the score given to the correct account that should sign at a certain point in time is higher and the second, third, fourth account that are in the list of who can sign have a lower score. So let's say each block has more possibility of who can sign, okay? Each one with a different score. 
is not always the same uh, account as the score. I represent them like this with this color. Let's say that the first block has been signed by the correct account that's supposed to sign this block. And two, the block has a, a connection, a chain with the score 10. Let's say that the second one has been missing the most uh, correct account and the second one is going to sign and the score is 8. So on, the third does not attain again and the last one, everybody missed their turn and is signed by one lower uh, score account. This gives the chain a certain value. So in the case of a fork, based on which account I've signed each side of the fork, each fork has a different score. For example, the fork on the left has score 46, the fork on the right has score 40. This automatically says that in this case, the most authoritative chain is the one created with more score. Score given by stake, score given by hard drive space, score given by importance, by amount of a burn coin, etc. etc. Now we're talking about proof of what? Obviously, we are in a moment in which the need to evolve in this technology is very high. The capacity to create a proof that is uh, eclectic in their use uh, is very important. Blockchain Zoo is creating ZooBC, which is a chain that uses proof of participation. You want to know what is proof of participation? Well, go in uh, zubc.com or .org, which is the forum, and you're going to see the link to the white paper. You're going to find a lot of uh, video that explain proof of participation to you, and you're going to have the chance to learn these new mechanics that is going to bring a revolution in the blockchain world. Thank you for watching, and uh, till the next time.